Hi everyone. In this video, I wanted to spend some time showing you how it is possible to generate bootstrap confidence intervals around goodness of fit measures when you are performing uh, structural equation modeling using Stata. So before I get started, I do, want, I do want to mention that underneath the video description, you'll find a link to the data file that I'm working from in this presentation. So you can download a copy of the data to follow along. You will also find this do file that you see on your screen that contains the code that I'll be going through uh, in this presentation. So feel free to download that uh, to read up on it and study it. And actually, with some minor modifications, you can use the code that I've written to generate uh, bootstrap confidence intervals uh, for your own analysis. So the variables in our data set that we're going to be working from are the anxiety, mastery goals, interest, engagement, and achieve variables. And the basic conceptual model for our analysis is uh, this right here. So it's basically just a path analysis. And you'll see that I've got uh, mastery goals and anxiety uh, serving as exogenous variables in the model. And then we have interest and engagement and achievement serving as endogenous variables where interest and engagement are serving as mediators of the effects of mastery goals and anxiety on achievement. So going into our do file right here, you'll see that I've got it broken out in, into three sections. Um, this is just to kind of help us to better get a sense of what's going on. So in this first section right here on line three, you'll see that I'm using the SEM command uh, followed by the specification of my model. And so you'll see that inside the parenthesis here, I've got achieve being predicted by interest and engagement. And then we've got, um, and so the arrow that is drawn right here, this is just a less than sign followed by a hyphen. In the next parenthesis here, or set of parentheses, we've got interest and engagement. These are being predicted by mastery goals and anxiety. And you'll notice that I have a comma and the no caps latent option that's given right there. So this is our model uh, that we're going to be uh, running. And uh, on the next line, line four right here, you'll see it says we've got the ESTAT post estimation command set it, uh, for GOF, or that's basically for goodness of fit. And we have a comma and we're using the stats option followed by inside the parenthesis all. So that portion of our code is going to generate the model fit statistics associated with the SEM model that we specified right here. Now on the next line, I'm going to use the uh, uh, return list code. So uh, basically what this is going to do is it's going to generate a list of our class objects that contain the goodness of fit measures. And Although it's not really required, this is going to be useful later on when we start referring to our class objects in uh, the program that we write below. So I'm going to highlight all of this and click on Execute Selection. And just briefly, just kind of going through, we're not going to spend any time really interpreting things. The main focus of this uh, presentation is on generating uh, confidence intervals. So you can see uh, in this first set of tables here, we've got our path coefficients and significance levels and so forth. In the next table, we have, uh, because we've used the ESTAT goodness of fit uh, uh, post estimation command followed by uh, the option of stats all you'll see that we get our uh, chi-square uh, goodness of fit value and significance uh, value right there the RMSEA that's given uh, right here uh, there is a 90 percent uh, confidence interval that's given but it's not a bootstrap confidence interval uh, but uh, for this presentation we're going to generate a bootstrap confidence interval around the RMSEA you'll see that we have um, the uh, comparative fit index, the CFI, and the TLI that's given. So there's the CFI and uh, our TLI. And so when we clicked or typed in return list, now we get a list of our class objects uh, that contain the values uh, that are presented or given in that table above. So you'll see right here uh, it says RSRMR. So this R class object contains the 0 0.07466 or rounded off at uh, 0 0.075 in the table above. Uh, the R class object for TLI uh, contains a value of 0 0.5099. Uh, the R class object for the CFI is 0 0.8366. 
And then for the RMSEA right here, the R class object contains that RMSEA of 0.174. So those the, those objects contain the values that are uh, presented in this table above. And so we need uh, to understand that concept because we're going to be using those uh, R class objects when we are performing our bootstrapping. So in the next portion of our uh, syntax, uh, we have a program that we're writing. And then in the last portion, we're using bootstrapping down here. So we're going to start off uh, right here with program define fit. And um, so fit is the name of a program that we're writing. And you'll notice that I have a comma followed by R class. So we're going to be returning R class objects and uh, basically using those uh, R class objects in our bootstrapping below. So this first line just says program defined fit, comma, R class right there. The next line you'll see that it's got our uh, SEM command followed by our model specification, which is what we ran above. So technically speaking, we don't have to do all of this first before we uh, generate our confidence intervals uh, or, or to perform this part of our analysis. Uh, but generally speaking, you would certainly be uh, doing this, this aspect of our analysis when you are reporting on the path coefficients and the general goodness of fit measures. But nevertheless, uh, so again, program defined fit, comma, R class. Uh, and fit is the name of our program. It's an arbitrary name, so you can use whatever name that you want. Uh, followed by, again, the SEM command and our model specification. On the next line, we have estat gof, comma, stats all. So this right here is going to generate uh, that uh, set of fit indices, and it's from that table that we're going to be pulling those R class objects. So you'll notice on the next few lines, it says return scalar, and I'm giving a name to the R class object. Right here, it says CFI equals R, and inside uh, the parenthesis, you have CFI. So this right here is going to be returning that scalar. Uh, which is going to be, uh, which is found right here um, in our output when we uh, selected return or uh, typed in return list. Then we have return scalar, I'm calling it uh, TLI, and that's set equal to R, uh, the R class object containing the TLI. Then we have SRMR equals, and then the R class object uh, containing the SRMR. And then we have uh, return scalar RMSEA equals. Uh, the R class object uh, for RMSEA. So just keep in mind that we denote that R class object with an R uh, and then the um, the uh, value of, of that object is going to be is found basically within the parenthesis. So that's what we're essentially referring to. So after we uh, incorporate return scalars for each of those uh, we have to end the program. So we type end. So if I highlight all of this right here and uh, execute the selection, um, you'll notice right here it says program fit already defined. And that's because I was uh, working with this um, uh, previously before I started the video and I'd already run it before. And uh, so that that seems like it might be kind of a frustrating error because what it's, what it's basically saying is, is that we've already defined uh, this uh, object called fit. So we don't need to redefine that again. Um, and so to deal, to deal with that issue, to prevent us, like let's say I wanted to rerun the analysis where I've re-specified the model. Um, you know, I can make whatever changes in uh, right here I want to, but if I tried to run the program straight um, from this, I would end up with the same error message, which would be kind of frustrating. Uh, so a good strategy then when you're writing programs uh, is to initiate the program by dropping the program uh, to begin with. So I know it seems a little counterintuitive, but this first line right here, I've typed in capture, then program drop fit. So if if there was no program that had been written that, that, uh, that defined uh, fit or that was named fit, there would be no, there's not going to be any problem. Uh, but nevertheless, if there is a program that has been written before that's been named fit, then we would want to drop that before uh, redefining that program. So if I write this in uh, uh, into my uh, syntax and then I highlight all of this, now when I run it, you'll see that it, it uh, defines the program just fine. 
So like I said, it's a good practice that whenever you're writing a program, you know, this is the first line of the actual program and this is giving the name of the program. It's a good practice to drop that program first before uh, defining that program. And then that gets you out of this problem of getting these um, errors where it says uh, program fit already defined or, or program whatever the name is already defined. So now we are ready to perform our bootstrapping. So on when we go down here, you'll see I'm using the bootstrap command. And then I'm referencing basically all of these scalars. So you can see I've, I've typed in CFI is equal to R, CFI, TLI equals R, and then a the TLI in parentheses and so forth. So I'm just basically referencing all of those scalars down here. And so uh, that's basically all there is to it. You'll see that next I include a comma and then I have to give the number of bootstrap replications. So I'm just defaulting for this presentation at 50. Ordinarily when you're doing bootstrapping you would want a much larger number of uh, replications. Um, but I'm keeping this at a smaller number just in order to uh, minimize the amount of processing time uh, as we go through the remainder of this presentation. Uh, but ordinarily you might select something more like a thousand or two thousand uh, replications. But uh, like I said, we're keeping this smaller. You'll notice that I'm uh, continuing the line. So I've got basically these uh, three forward slashes. That's just going to allow me to continue my syntax on the next line uh, for this command. So then you can see I've got level uh, and inside parenthesis 95 so that's just requesting 95 percent bootstrap confidence intervals uh, I can change that number to 90 or 99 if I wanted to very easily then following that I've got a colon and then following that the name of the program that I've written which is called fit so after that you'll see that I've got I've typed in estat bootstrap comma and then I've typed in all right here so if I highlight this we've already defined the program so it's ready to go so when I perform the bootstrapping you'll see it takes a few seconds but now I get my uh, results so looking at this you'll see I've got the CFI, TLI, SRMR and uh, RMSEA that's given so these are the values that were originally in that goodness of fit uh, table and then you'll see that we've got bootstrap standard errors and then we've got three different types of confidence intervals that are given. So first off you'll notice that uh, the end right here this is referring to a confidence interval that's essentially assuming that the uh, sampling distribution is going to be uh, normal uh, which is really not very plausible when you're dealing with values such as the CFI, TLI, SRMR or RMSEA and the reason why is because um, you know the CFI is bounded uh, between zero bounded at zero and one so it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to assume a symmetric distribution around the CFI particularly as you are approaching uh, the upper or lower bound of that um, of that scale uh, I guess you know theoretically speaking you know when you're around uh, sort of the midpoint of the scale or you know as your sample size increases uh, that would be less problematic but um, generally speaking, it's not my preference uh, with respect to uh, forming a confidence interval. But the normal confidence interval is using or pivoting off of the bootstrap standard error that you see right here. You'll see on the next line we have a percentile confidence interval. Um, and so and then you also have a bias corrected confidence interval on the next line. So those, you know, one, either of those would make a little bit more sense in terms of uh, using a confidence interval associated with a given um, goodness of fit measure. And the reason why is because uh, they, they are allowed to be asymmetric. So at any rate, uh, you can see with the CFI, uh, the normal uh, confidence interval ranges between 0.76085 uh, to 0.912. You can see the percentile confidence interval ranges between 0.7495 thereabouts and 0.8826. And then the bias corrected ranges between uh, 0.749 and uh, 0.8825 pretty much the same upper level or upper um, bound uh, that we saw with the uh, percentile confidence interval. So at any rate we have all three of those options that are available to us 
for each of the uh, fit indices that we um, are requesting those intervals.